Ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames and Messieurs, good evening, bonsoir. Please welcome the chair of the GSCA, our favorite fish, Kim Cavendish. Bonsoir, tout le monde, and welcome to the GSCA Annual Achievement Awards a night when we celebrate giant screen films and pay tribute to the people who create, distribute, and exhibit them. Tonight, GSEA will present awards for filmmaking, marketing, and lifelong learning, and IMAX will present its Maximum Image Award. I know you can't wait. <laughs> Thank you to our conference host, the Canadian Museum of Civilization, for their generous hospitality in hosting us this year. I'd like to thank also all the GSCA committees, volunteers, and technical crew for their help in planning this conference and this awards gala. Planning this event takes a lot of human effort, and we really thank you so much. Would everyone from the Canadian Museum of Civilization, the GSCA committees, and the technical crew please stand so we can thank you again? We didn't thank you enough. Again. And now I'd like to thank our presenting sponsor for this evening's ceremony and dinner, and that is IMAX Corporation. We are grateful for IMAX's ongoing generosity through several decades for their support of GSCA. Please join, join me in offering a warm welcome to IMAX's Vice President of Institutional Sales and Client Services in the Americas, Mr. Oh, excuse me, Monsieur Mikulatz. <laughs> Answer to lots. <laughs> answer to worse. Uh, and I haven't been called a dish, although I would appreciate that from uh, from the top row. Merci, bonsoir tout le monde. I'm looking forward to a really fun night. What a magnificent place to have this event. We appreciate the hospitality and the grandeur. Tonight is a night when we look back on the last year. An achievement, and we look back sometimes way back, some of our greatest moments ever. But the reason we do this is to help us dream about the rewarding things we have yet to achieve. IMAX and DKP 70mm are very proud to help the GSCA bestow awards to producers, distributors, and exhibitors. We are particularly proud to honor the frequently overlooked heroes in the IMAX booth. And we have two giant treats for you tonight in the IMAX theater. Immediately after the award ceremony, we will honor our IMAX Founders Award winner with a rare opportunity to see the 1976 Smithsonian inaugural IMAX film to fly the very first movie, IMAX movie, many of us here ever experienced. After a memorable dinner in the Grand Hall, we'll return to the IMAX theater and continue a recent tradition of showing last year's winner to the IMAX Hall of Fame, Shackleton's Antarctic Adventure. We thank NOVA, WGBH, and White Mountains Films for producing this triumphant film and distributor National Geographic for making this special event tonight possible for us. The New York Times praised this film saying, the IMAX format returns a vertiginous sense of scale to the Antarctic landscapes that hints at what Shackleton and his team must have felt when they first saw the region. Even after all these years, I remember reading this with Bob Harmon back in Laguna Beach, and we both had the, the same reaction. What does vertiginous mean? <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, we looked up Bob's 1865 high school dictionary, <laughs> and we've both seen Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. Okay, so let's talk about the future. We too have embarked on an adventure 
Digital technology is certainly taking us somewhere. Storytelling, production, post-production, distribution, lasers, you name it, everything is changing. As was the case 40 years ago, our voyage will not be easy. We will need to improvise, innovate, risk. At IMAX, we will provide leadership, but everyone in this room needs to provide leadership. That's how we're going to be distinctive. That's how we're going to enrich our world. That's how we're going to inspire young and old. When we think about all of this at IMAX, we assume three things. Quality, quality, and quality. We work at every level of the production chain. We, everything we'll be do, we do will be the highest quality possible. We are a vertically oriented company, always have been. That's what it takes to get the New York Times to call Reed Smoot's cinematography vertiginous. <laughs> you have to feel like you're there. You don't feel vertigo if all of the aspects of the production chain are not world class and if the theater quality experience is not maintained. That's the difference between a format and an aspirational format. That's the difference between a $100 million box office and a $10 million box office in this industry. Everyone here knows our industry is buffeted by some challenges. Economics, information consumption trends, marketing trends, it's not easy. I was at GSCA board's strategic retreat this summer. We were discussing all this in small groups and Jonathan Barker said, maybe we're all like boiling frogs. We called our groups, our group, the boiling frogs. You'll probably have to ask him about that and I'll bet he has t-shirts in the lobby. <laughs> but Jonathan's team just made a fantastic film, one of the best, Flight of the Butterflies. And when I watched that film, I don't think it was made by a company that thinks we're frogs in a saucepan. I remember meeting many years ago, only a few years ago actually, in the Gilbert Freeman films when Greg gathered us and said, look, we're not going down without a fight. What we do is too important, and I agree. What we do is too important not just to capitulate in a race to the common. Last year's co-winner of the best picture was Rocky Mountain Express. Stephen Loeb made that film with his own money. He's in. Thank goodness, he's in. And so is IMAX. Over the past few years, we've established close contact with many industry leaders, and we have lots of more of that planned. It's very clear that these leaders think one of their biggest problems is the lack of blue chip content. So we want to do something about it. I'm very pleased tonight to provide you with an update. IMAX is in the final stages of executing a 25 to $50 million fund to produce educational documentaries for the IMAX network. We're in. This fund will give us an opportunity to explore new vistas in filmmaking. We'll leverage our unparalleled brand recognition and satisfaction to forge new kinds of films and new kinds of film partnerships. We'll leverage our Hollywood influence to fuse new kinds of documentaries. It is indeed an exciting future for the IMAX Institutional Network. While the final transaction is still pending completion and documentation, this is the part my lawyers wrote. <laughs> we expect and believe that this fund will allow us to expand our production's pipeline starting today. And so we're teaming up with Disney and Tony Myers. We'll have cameras back in space. Drew Feldman is back in the wild. We plan for documentary releases to double in frequency. And one more thing. I have an important story about leadership. Jack Kahn was one of the leaders of the Museum Film Network. He was the CEO at the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago from 1987 to 1997. Jack and his colleagues including Ottawa's own Frank Corcoran, who I understand is in the house. Frank, I didn't see you. Are you here? Yes. Welcome, Frank. IMAX extended a welcome to Frank tonight. Stand up, Frank.
they saw a future that was not pro providing enough science content for their theaters and they took action. They did not wait for their future business to dry up. They created their future. What's more, the Museum of Science and Industry produced their own IMAX films, two of which are in the IMAX Hall of Fame. Thank you, John Wickstrom. Thank you, Steve Bishop. Thank you, Valentine Cass. That's what we need in this industry, and if you look around, it's here, not just IMAX. Jack Kahn passed away six weeks ago. We dedicate tonight's event to his can-do spirit in the industry. To quote a Canadian music legend, long may we run. Thank you for your time. Our best wishes to all of the nominees tonight.